Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Ledette. I'm an Associate Professor of Disease Ecology and Epidemiology. If we can learn more about the tick, that will help everyone prevent themselves from suffering from a tick-borne disease. So ticks spend the majority of their life in the environment, off an animal, even though we think about them as blood-feeding um, vampires. Um, but the majority of life, they're on the ground, they're exposed to all the environmental conditions, but they have to find that next meal, that blood meal. How do they do that? You can imagine, they're very small, and we don't have mice and other animals just running all over the place. Well, they develop really special ways to find hosts. Now, depending on the type of tick species, they have one of two strategies to find their next blood meal. We consider some ticks as questing ticks and some ticks as hunter or assassin ticks. Now, that's based on the way they seek their host. So ticks like black-legged ticks or the deer tick, the tick that transmits Lyme disease, is a questing tick. When the time is right, when the environmental conditions are correct, the tick crawls out of the ground, very low uh, surface layer of dirt or de decaying material, up to little twigs, grass leaves, and basically climbs as far as they can and then hangs out their arms, waiting for a random host, animal, something with blood, whether it's you, a small mouse, a deer, a bird, to pass by. When you pass by, they'll hook on and then they'll climb and find a place to feed. So unlike the black-legged tick, other tick species have a different strategy. Instead of sitting there and waiting for a tick to come by, the questing strategy or ambush strategy, Lone Star ticks actually chase down their prey. They have a hunting or an assassin style, and you can find these ticks running after hosts, prey, anything with blood, you, your dog, your loved one, a mouse, and they can chase for up to three meters to grab on attaching to the lower extremities. Remember, even the questing ticks are not climbing that high. They're really attaching your lower extremities and finding a nice place to feed. So attaching to the feet of the animal, your shoes, your legs, and climbing up and finding a nice place to hang out and take that blood meal. Now, beyond the strategy of finding the host, they're also looking for stuff and not looking with eyes, even though some ticks do have primordial eyes. Most ticks are actually seeking hosts through different sensory organs. Now, what are they sensing? Well, smell, kind of like how we smell, except their smell is a little different. They're smelling things like lactic acid, which is a byproduct of muscle movement. So an animal that is moving, ticks are sensing the byproducts of that movement and looking for that in the environment. Not only that, they're looking for carbon dioxide. So as an animal breathes, they exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide. Ticks can sense carbon dioxide. And when they sense carbon dioxide, they realize that a host may be near. So we've got carbon dioxide, we've got smell like lactic acid. We also have heat. Warm-blooded animals like myself, like yourself, like a mouse, are warmer compared to the background of the environment, the plants in the environment. So ticks are seeing or sensing heat or radiant heat from warm-blooded organisms, indicating a potential blood meal is nearby. So the tick has the questing strategy or the host seeking strategy, whether they're assassin, ambush, looking for their host, they're smelling lactic acid, they're feeling heat. Next thing, they're sensing vibration. Some ticks actually can feel when an animal is passing by. Some more specific tick species actually can sense their host. Cattle ticks can actually has, have evidence they can actually hear the chewing of a cow and will seek out that chewing, that oscillation of those muscles, why a cow chews its cud, as we all can imagine. Or some tick species will actually seek out roadkill animals. And you're like, why would they do that? Well, they're not feeding on its blood because it's dead. They're actually waiting for scavengers to come and will attach to scavengers that come to scavenge at that roadkill animal. So ticks are really interesting in the way they can sense their predators and prey. Now that's the, that's the host, that's the reservoir, that's the animal that's coming by. Ticks also can talk to each other and they can do it through th certain different ways, but it's almost, it's what we call pheromones. It's like colognes and perfumes or smells they give off to communicate with their brethren or their other ticks around them. So there's pheromones like what we call aggregation pheromones. When the larval tick decides it wants to take a blood meal, it will climb up and it'll tell all its friends, hey, come with me. 
and let's go find the same animal to, to attach to. Some ticks, when they attach to a host, they'll produce mating pheromones to attract the opposite sex. So there's a lot of ways ticks are finding their hosts in the environment, because remember, most of the life the tick is off the host. The small amount of time the tick is on the host, it's gotta really be careful of what it's doing to get that really important blood meal to perpetuate the life cycle of itself and its um, offspring.